So in 93, you guys go set the world on fire. And back to his question, are, are you starting to think, I mean, Maycar's gone. Mm-hmm. Are you starting to think I, I'm, I'm ready to level up to a crew chief role yet? No. Are you no, not even I, thinking about that? No. I, I was having so much fun. So my dad was crew chief, okay? So I'd moved away from tire guy. I think it's uh, my brother Brad. He came in to be the tire guy on the Rusty and his attention to detail and all that stuff. I mean, I was his guy. I mean, I was his – it was me and Jeffrey Thousand who he grew up with Rusty back in um, St. Louis. You know, His name's what? Jeffrey Thousand. His last name's Thousand? Thousand, yeah. That's yeah. a badass last <laughs> yeah. name. Jeffrey Thousand. I mean, Parrot and Thousand. I mean, they got the last names covered. I've just right never there. heard that last name before. Yeah, yeah, it's Jeffrey Thousand. So Sweet. He, he still works there today. No shit. Yep, yep, yeah. still works there, goes on the road. I think he works with uh, Cindric and those guys at Xfinity Oh, stuff. he still works at Penske? Yeah. That's a that's old oh, thou- yeah. that's Bob Thousand's old. <laughs> Bob Thousand. That's one of the most Thousand boys, that's you know. Thousand, hey, you know yeah. he's good. Thousand but um, yeah. the things that I learned working with him, I mean, like you said, he he would tell us on the radio, said, listen, I need 20 pounds more rebound in the right front shop. And we'd like, okay. And um, guy go build a shot. Put more rebound in it, and phew, there it goes better, faster. Yeah. I mean, I did all the suspension stuff and chassis stuff, so I had to rate all the springs, every <laughs> one of them, by hand. We didn't have that machine. Had to rate every one of them. And, I mean, we had all these hypercos and, and all this stuff. So I was that guy, and I had all these lists, and, you know, I had everything. Yeah. So when he said – I mean, he'd be walking around the car. I'd be setting the car up, and he'd look at me measuring right front frame height, and he said – he says that right front frame height was it, is it is it six inches? And I'm like, mm, no, it's like six and a thirty second. He goes, I want six inches. And I'm like, okay, yeah. So I mean, that's that's how I learned to be like the chassis guy, you know. So that was ninety three and ninety four, and then into ninety five. Oh, you started ninety five uh, with. Still with Penske? Because I know 95 is when you went to Yates, right? Yeah, and yeah. started out in 95, was rusty. And we were at Charlotte. And it was October, I'll never forget, October 1995. Larry and Robert had mentioned something to me. Larry yeah. McReynolds. Mc, right? McReynolds, Robert yeah. Yates, yep. Yeah. They mentioned something to me um, a few weeks earlier that they were looking to start up a new team. And they were interested in me doing being the crew chief. And I'm, you know, I don't, I'm happy. I'm. We're winning races. I mean, hand over fist and just having so much fun. I mean, having fun. Yeah. You know, I mean, winning is fun. And um, I'm like, I don't know if I'm ready to do this. And so Rusty caught wind that I was looking to do something different. And it was raining on Friday. We we're over there working on the car. He pulls up in his Cadillac, Marstown, Tennessee, Rusty Wallace Cadillac. <laughs> throw that in there for him um <laughs> he rolls his window down i look out the window he said come here and i go over he said get in the car I'm like, oh lord what's this yeah this is how people get whacked yeah so we drove down turn three and four charlotte motor speedway and we talked and he said you know i heard you they want you to come crew chief the 88 car and I said, yeah, I've got the opportunity. I mean, it's actually a great opportunity. You know, and I think I'm ready for it, but I'm not sure. He said, well, I, 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 I can't let you leave. Mm. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Good heavens. Yeah, and he reaches in the back seat. And probably, I don't know if I should tell this or not, but I told you I'm going to be honest. Be honest, yeah. Be honest. Yeah. He hands me a envelope. And then that envelope is full of hundred dollar bills. And he says, I don't want you to leave. I took the envelope, went back to the garage, I put it in my briefcase, went home. Um whew, that was a tough decision. I called Jimmy Maycar that night and told him, you know, about the opportunity I had. He goes, Man, that's a great one. And I said, you think I'm ready? He said, hell yeah, you're ready. I said, I know you are. I said, I watched you. I trained you. 
you know, you grew up with me. And then, uh, so I had to go in next day. Actually, I waited till I think it was uh, Monday or Tuesday after the race, after the Charlotte race. And um, we were at the shop up there in, um, here in Mooresville. And um, Rusty walked by, I sat in the car up for the next week. And I said, hey, man, you got a minute? Let me talk to you. And he goes, yeah, sure, come on. And then we went into, uh, I think, engineering office, dad's office, something like that. And I said, hey, listen, I'm going to take this opportunity. He said, really? I handed him an envelope. And I said, I am so grateful for this opportunity that you give me and the things I learned. I said, but I got to move on. I got to do it. I got to try. And the rest is history. Man, that's emotional for you. <laughs> yeah. That's how much Rusty means to you. Oh, yeah. I mean, that guy taught me more about race cars. And I was able to transfer everything that I learned from that man and my dad to my success starting out in 1996 with Del Jared to this day. Man. I didn't <laughs> know that that was as difficult of a decision. Yeah. You know, so sorry. You're you're good, buddy. Um, you mm -hmm. ended up you ended up crew chief in in 1995. Mm -hmm. So you make that decision in the middle mm -hmm. of the year. Yeah, or during the year. Right. Yeah, late in the year. You All said right. October. It was October. Right? Yeah. Ernie yeah. runs three races. You crew chief those races. Yeah. So so let let me ask you. Okay. So your this is obviously a a really hard decision. Mm -hmm. You 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 have emotions about it. Even today, at any point, I mean, you go and you run these three races. You you had to prepare. You're in the shop. You've, mm -hmm. you've, you're crew chief on a, uh, from the shop floor, which is a little bit different than being at the racetrack. Mm -hmm. You go to the racetrack, and you go through these three races with Ernie. At any point in this, in this experience in 1995, are you thinking, I made the wrong decision? Absolutely, or absolutely not. Never. Never. So uh, from the I ne I from the moment you hit the shop floor at Yates, I never looked back. It was the right choice. Yeah, you knew it. Yeah, yeah. So when I made that decision um, after me and Rusty talked, it was uh, I think it was an off weekend actually, and um, Ernie was testing at Rockingham, and your uh, car. Your well, car. It wasn't my car. Not your car yet. James Entz was actually the crew chief. And he knew nothing about this. And me and Robert got in his uh, Lincoln Town car, mm -hmm. and we drove down to Rockingham, and we talked the whole way down there about all this stuff. Like, man, we're gonna do this. We're gonna do that. You're pumped. You're oh ready. yeah. You're like, he, it, he was so he was so excited because I was you know, I was just telling him all the stuff that I'd learned, the things that I felt like that I could bring to the table, yeah. and you know, how old uh, are I, you? I'm, I'm a, I'm a nervous, uh, it's 1995, let's see, 30 years old? 30 years old. Yeah, 30 years old. That's young. Yeah. So um, we pulled up in that Lincoln Town car and pulled up next to the uh, the truck, and Robert gets out. I open the door, and I stand up, and the guys in the garage looked and went, holy <laughs> what's he doing here? You were the enemy? <laughs> they, they they didn't know I was coming. Yeah, you know. So did they I mean, know you were the crew chief or going to be? Uh, well, they figured it out. I'm sure. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> Real that, quick, I'm sure. Point. Do you want to hear the rest of that conversation with Todd Parrott? Well, you can by listening to the full podcast. The Dale Junior Download is available on all major podcast platforms.